So in the previous class, we uh, talked about Ricci decomposition, which is also understood as irreducible um, representation of the Riemann tensor. And um, this is the part, is one of the components of that, of uh, one of the irreducible part of Riemann tensor, written as this. We already have discussed this in the previous lesson. Where S is given as n is the dimension of the space okay looks like I wrote this as a b in the previous well let's forget about this right now so this is s from here and r mu nu we know is, is the Ricci tensor which is obtained by contracting two indices of the Riemann tensor. Okay, um, in a way, uh, actually, the Ricci, uh, the Riemann tensor, it can also be understood that the Riemann tensor is actually broken as a symmetric tensor plus a traceless tensor. Uh, the symmetric part is the Ricci tensor. The traceless part is the Weyl tensor. And we know that Riemann tensor has 20 independent components. They are actually broken in 10 and 10. Okay. So we know that if you contract, uh, this, and we know that this is obtained by contracting the indices of the Riemann tensor itself. So if you contract indices, you know you lose information. If you lose information um, of the, so that the information which is contained in the Riemann tensor um, is lost. Some of it is lost uh, in in when we go to Riemann tensor by contracting the indices, like stress energy tensor. We know that the trace of if we, if we take the trace of the um, uh, stress energy tensor, we know it's sort of summation of energy density plus, plus the pressure in the x, y, and z direction, and uh, the, the, that's what traces. So basically, we lose information about um, the momentum, in the x, y, and the momentum um, um, uh, density in in various directions. So that's again a hand wave argument that if you contract on two indices, you actually get um, you uh, lose information but again you, you, the trace of the stress energy tensor does not is end up in a tensor itself in this case actually uh, the uh, contracting on one of the indices of uh, the Riemann tensor actually uh, ends up in another tensor Ricci tensor now uh, Ricci tensor is the only only possible tensor that can be obtained by contracting two indices because of the symmetrical prop because of the properties of these indices here the, in the indices um, mu nu alpha uh, beta uh, Ricci tensor is the only possible tensor that can be obtained by contracting the indices where in this case it's these two indices as we see here now it's a tensor so it, uh, it does talk about uh, it does have a physical interpretation because usually tensors and vectors they have some physical meaning associated. So uh, just to begin with, in three dimension, both Riemann tensor and Ricci tensor have six components. Weyl tensor actually vanishes. So in three dimension, Ricci tensor is equivalent to Riemann tensor. Um, okay. Now, there are a few more qualities of Riemann uh, Ricci tensor is that it's symmetric. We just said that. You can prove this, it's, it's symmetric. Um, moreover, as, 
as we said, it has a physical property. The physical property, I'll just write it down, is understood as this. That the volume element translates or changes like this. What does this mean? Uh, this means that if you have a volume element and you let it and you, you move it, parallel transport it, such that these elements, each of the each of the points on this volume and follow their own geodesic, uh, which you see that each of these points rely on certain geodesic, and you could transport it such that each of these points keep moving on the geodesic, you will see that actually the box gets deformed. In some way, it gets deformed. So each point follows a geodesic, you let it follow that geodesic and then this volume changes to, so if this is d mu, um, uh, d mu um, Euclidean, because you know uh, you locally uh, space time is flat and you let it move with this kind of, uh, I'm, I'm just talking uh, qualitatively and if you move it such that it moves on the, the, all the points on the volume moves on a geodesic on their their cons, uh, their respective geodesic the new volume actually the, actually the change in volume is actually related uh, is actually the information that information is contained in the Ricci tensor so let me write it down the volume change of a volume element is contained in the Ricci tensor. So how do how how a volume element changes volume as it moves on a curved space on a curved uh, on a curvature actually is contained in the Ricci tensor. And this you can say it's direct proportionality here that the new um, uh, the new the the curved the, the the new volume obtained because the movement here is some Euclidean volume plus this new component this new which depends on the Ricci tensor R mu nu so direct proportionality so that is the physical property of physical understanding of the Ricci tensor 